Cleopatra has been getting absolutely annihilated, and I don't say that lightly. It got a 1% audience score and 11% critic score. This is worse than both Velma and She-Hulk. And when you combine that with pissing off an entire nation to the point where you sue you, you would have thought Netflix would have apologized. Say we're sorry, we didn't realize we were hiring a load of people who hate Egypt. This doesn't reflect Netflix's values. Although apparently, it seems it does. Because at this point, their silence just seems to be agreement. Especially when your actors are coming out and going, Netflix's Queen Cleopatra. Patra star responds to fundamentally racist casting backlash. I hesitate on the word backlash because I think the title is just far more accurate without it. And yet, despite her comments in this interview, it did get worse when she went on some unhinged rant saying that apparently blackwashing isn't a thing. I mean, hello? <laughs> okay, maybe you just don't like the term blackwashing. How about colonizing Egyptian history so that you can erase an indigenous population from their cultural heritage? Maybe you should try that one on for size. We know what Cleopatra looked like. There are pictures, there are statues, and Egyptian historians who literally directed the excavations at Giza and led the search for Cleopatra's tomb, who all have the physical proof that you're wrong. But after all, when even the director herself comes out and says, well, why shouldn't she be? And admits that this isn't actually Cleopatra, it's a reimagined Cleopatra. And it's pretty obvious that everyone knows the truth. So I don't know why we're coming out and pretending like we don't. And there's only so far where ignorance is actually an excuse, especially when it comes to historical fact, like objective truth and reality. And I think that point is when you say something and then you get corrected, and just continue to say the same thing as before anyway. And so, as we go through the latest bombshells that have landed after its release, I just want you to have one question in mind. When does ignorance turn into malevolence? Now, I think one of the most significant parts of Queen Cleopatra is the ratings. Because yes, it got 1%, which is the lowest I've ever seen, at least when it comes to shows like this. There was MILF Manor, which I'm pretty sure had a zero. <laughs> okay, no, even MILF Manor got higher scores, <laughs> even from the critics. <laughs> Oh boy, if any of you have seen my reviews of that, you'll know why that's so bad. Bad for Cleopatra anyway. And this is off two and a half thousand ratings, so not a small sample. But the most significant part is that there's only nine from the professional critics. Now, you may go, oh, well, this is just because it's a Netflix documentary and they just don't get many scores. No, it's because it's such a hot topic and they know they can't call this show what it is. I think they're scared because when you get a far safer topic, like a different Netflix documentary, something like Who Are We? A Chronicle of Racism in America, it gets 98% off 50 reviews. When it's a safe topic, the corporate press are more than willing to cover it. The issue is they can't with Cleopatra because they've got two warring sides and they're supposed to agree with both. On the one hand, yes, we do love going around just telling everyone that they're awful people. But on the other hand, you are colonizing Egyptian, therefore African history, and rewriting it to fit an American cultural point of view. <laughs> so they understand the danger, and they really don't want to agree with American colonization. <laughs> and that is how you get reviews like this. Or indeed a 0.01 on Metacritic. And it's only a 0.01 because of one positive review, and that positive review gives it a 10, simply because I'm just trying to mess with Reddit. In reality, it's a truly awful show. <laughs> Why would anyone think it's okay to just ignore actual history? Even the positive reviews are only positive, so you can read how awful it is in reality. <laughs> and the professional reviews aren't any better. It's not very good, it lacks context, personality, and a reason for being made. I'll tell you what the reason for being made is. It's to erase Egyptian history. The director even said it herself that this is a reimagined Cleopatra. And yet she wasn't going to call it fiction or fantasy, no. It was called a documentary. It's just so we could muddy the waters and try to erase Egyptian heritage. No wonder they're pissed. No wonder they're suing you. And the longer this goes on without Netflix issuing an apology, the more it seems that they agree with them. I would really love the director to answer the question about what bothers us so much about Egyptian history. And some of the reviews even seem to contradict themselves, because we talk about reenactments are brought back down to earth with excellent background provided by experts. What, experts like this? I imagine her to have curly hair like me and a similar skin color. I imagine that she was a Ferrari F430 that flew through space. Or maybe you were referring to this one. I remember my grandmother saying to me, I don't care what they tell you in school, Cleopatra was black. I mean, I think we'll all agree that nothing will bring you back down to earth faster than an expert gran. She even goes, it's stunning how much is known about the Queen, but much of what we know thanks to Hollywood is pure rot. And I don't get the impression she's talking about this show, but she definitely should be. We get other people who seem to really love the information provided and say it's the presentation that lets him down, not the scholarly authority, despite the fact that that's the obvious problem. 
I mean, your scholarly authority is talking about your gran. I mean, if that's all the authority we need to provide for Netflix, I have some incredibly scholarly ghost stories I can tell you. But I think out of all of them, my favourite review is this one. A surface-level docudrama that often slips into Mills and Boone territory. That would be the same Mills and Boone that are famous for their softcore romance novels, although Wikipedia prefers to call it escapist fiction for women, which has to be the classiest description I've ever heard for a book that includes the term huge and throbbing. Although I would take issue with his longer review where at the start he says, the discourse about it is people commenting on the colour of somebody's skin, and in doing so proves he's entirely missed the point. This isn't about where you fit on a Dulux colour chart. By that definition, I am no different than a Frenchman, even though we couldn't be further apart. No, this is about something more important. This is about the history and heritage of a nation and its people. And that to go about and lie about it is incredibly offensive. But to take it over, to invade their history and rewrite it as something that was factually untrue, to knowingly lie to a people about it, even when you've been corrected by the very people themselves, even when you've got those same people suing you because they can prove that you're wrong, when we have visual, physical evidence that you're wrong, then this isn't a reimagining, this isn't a what-if scenario, this isn't about how, what would have happened if history went a different way. It's the knowing and deliberate destruction of a nation's people, where they came from, their roots. And the worst thing is, this is a very, very specific American cultural perspective. It's only Americans that see Africa as like a country and not a continent, where despite the fact that it's split into tons of different nations, somehow they're just all the same. It's the same as looking at Europe and just going, ah, well, they all look the same, but they're not the same. Their culture is extremely different, and that makes them different people. That is what is important about them, and that is what the people of those nations value. And yet that is exactly what you're destroying, even to the point of just going, well, it's not a thing. And it comes down to the same thing. If you don't like the term blackwashing, how about colonizing Egyptian history so that you can erase an indigenous population from their cultural heritage? Sure, it's longer, but I think you'll find it carries a lot more moral weight and fully explains the outrage that you've received, the backlash that you've received. Because yes, there's been backlash, but the thing that's fundamentally racist is the TV show, because that is the astonishing thing throughout all of this. The fact that you've gone, oh, people are complaining about my TV show, I can't believe they've done this. It was your TV show that was the aggressor. It was you that was attacking and assaulting the Egyptian people. And then other people come in to defend them, and the Egyptians come along and defend themselves. We know the truth here. Maybe you've made a mistake. This isn't historically accurate. And they go, oh, I can't believe people are defending themselves against my attack. Why can't I just attack you and you shut up? As I've said many times, the problem with trying to take the moral high ground is you actually have to have morals. You can't be the aggressor and then complain when people stand up to you. Now, I thought it was bad enough when the director came out with this article. You remember the one from the previous video where she spoke about how this TV show was of a political nature and that all she needed to find was nuance. If only we can say something's nuanced and create a gray area we can force ourselves into, we can spin off an entirely different version of reality that won't be true. But we can claim, well, we don't know, maybe, possibly. But even with this, it was the director. It was like, well, they're just making a show, they're hiring other people, they're just actors getting paid, they need to eat, I'm not going to say anything about those. But there is a problem. When they come out and start gaslighting the audience themselves and just go, no, we're not doing that because it's impossible for us to be doing that. Well, we're doing it. Now, bearing in mind that gaslighting has actually been defined as a form of emotional abuse that causes a victim to question themselves giving the abusive partner even more power. Frames the statement in a little bit of a different light, don't you think? Because thanks to Bounding Into Comics, who went through a podcast that she was on, she was asked specifically about people being mad that Cleopatra is being blackwashed, to which she says, that just isn't a thing, is it? Did they not have mirrors on set, or is it that you think they deserve it? Maybe you just hate Egyptians so much that you think you can erase their history and they're not allowed to complain about it, is that it? You'll have to let us know your reasoning behind it, because I can only guess given the information at hand, because that's far from the worst thing she said. And as I said at the start, when does ignorance become malevolence? Is it when you start blaming the people that you're attacking? Because that's what comes up next. Say, oh, I find it sad that people are so self-loathing or so threatened by blackness 
whatever that is. This is a British actor, by the way. Nothing will ever be more weird to me than when British people start talking about American ideology as if they've just consumed it themselves. Because it requires you to be grounded in American history, which you're not, because you're British. So the values don't even make sense when you bring it over to this country, and yet, here we are. Apparently she thinks they're so self-loathing or threatened that they feel the need to separate Egypt from the rest of the continent. And this is what I mean by just racist comments. I don't know if you all realized, but I am not French, I'm not German, and no one in those countries would mistake me for being part of them. If I traveled the world, I would be recognized as English. Maybe Australian, because a lot of people don't know the difference, apparently. But they're not going to think I'm Swiss. It's a very culturally American thing to group people up by a Dulux color chart. The rest of the world doesn't do it. Europe doesn't do it that way. Africa doesn't do it that way. And just because Egypt is in the continent of Africa doesn't mean that everybody looks the same. And I can only assume that this came from the director because it doesn't sound like a British person talking. This sounds like someone who's been given talking points to repeat because these are American talking points, not English ones. Then later in the podcast, he says nobody has seen it yet, but everyone is bashing it. Everyone's seen it now, and they're bashing it even more than before. So that throws a little spanner in the works right there. <laughs> and she says there was absolutely a lot of people saying very horrible things. Were they truthful things? Because that's how I judge things. I don't really care what someone says. I care if it's true. And I think my view is definitely the better one when it comes to historical documentaries, which are meant to be factually accurate with the truth, not your truth. But she says it's important to remember there was also a lot of really positive responses. And there were, there was a lot of projection from places like The Guardian, who seemed to think that the idea of a historical documentary needing to be factually accurate is utterly insidious. Now I would say that attempting to lie to people that your TV show is factual history when in fact it's just a fantasy, a reimagining of Cleopatra, that you're attempting to muddy the waters of history and erase the Egyptian people from their own historical leaders, I would say that actually it's that which is utterly insidious. But then again, if we've learned one thing by now, it's that it's always projection. And it's also always about self-interest. Maybe that's why she's going, actually, this is the biggest thing I've had to deal with. It's the most I've ever need to navigate. Before, you know, the biggest thing I'd done was casualty. And she says, in the UK it's big, but it is a hospital show that starts with things like, oh, I'm gonna fly this helicopter after I've got drunk. Oh, by the way, I'm taking a bath and just throwing a toaster in it. It's not very deep or complicated. It's just basic soap opera. <laughs> and she said, well, it's not wholly negative. As time's gone on, those voices have got quieter and quieter. And do you know why? It's because those people were your audience. They cared about your show, and then they saw that actually you were just lying to everyone about it. And so they left. Your audience being quiet about your show isn't a good thing. It leads to things like this, where you get absolutely annihilated. But why would we stop there? The insanity's already on a roll. This is her time for the ultimate crescendo, where she proves Actually, maybe it's not malevolence. It might just be massive ignorance altogether. Maybe we just got the actress and just sent her out to see if she could take the flack for us after our show has already been proven to be terrible. Because we come out with some right bangers here. Apparently, the Egyptian people complaining that you are destroying their history is 100% fundamentally rooted in racism, which is a very modern ideology. And this is one of the reasons I say it comes from an American culture, because, and I say this with the greatest of respect to any American viewers, but you guys do seem to act like the world only started when America was created. <laughs> which is why this is so weird, because if Jada Pinkett Smith had come out and said this, I would have expected it. But this is from a Brit. She says, the ancient Egyptians don't think about race like we do. It was only contextualized with the transatlantic trade. <laughs> because that's not how the people thought of it back then. It's so bizarre to me. I can understand why it's bizarre to you, because it doesn't make any sense. I can fully understand why you can't grasp the concept. But because of that, she finds it very sad. She feels sad for them. She pities them. And like I say, I'm not even sure this is her opinion. I'm not sure these are her words. And if they are, I think it's just come from talks with the director. Because the director said something almost exactly the same as that. When she said that Amir wrote to her from his bedroom in Cairo, saying Cleopatra was Greek, and she went, Oh Lord, why would that be a good thing to you? You're Egyptian. She sees that as internalized discrimination, and not the fact that he's just far more educated than she is. That he actually lives in reality and not your weird fantasy world. Because all I see it as is basic bigotry. 
feeling sad for somebody because you don't even understand how Africa works. And she does go on to go, well actually though, the series is about more than that. It's like, well okay, so why couldn't you actually stick to the factual reality? Why couldn't you stick to the truth? Why did you feel the need to colonize Egyptian history and erase Egyptian people from their own heritage? Because to me, I think that's pretty disgusting. I think that shows a hateful disdain for the people. That's why I think Netflix should come out and apologize for this mess. Because everybody else living in reality know the truth. We have the evidence. We know that the Egyptians could accurately depict how people looked and that they knew the difference, which seems to be beyond the people who made Queen Cleopatra. No, instead, they think they should be able to go around the world and colonize anyone's history. I want to rewrite it. I want to muddy the waters. I want to tell you that everything you know and can prove and actually happened was wrong. And in fact, I know the truth. Of course, I don't have any evidence for that. I'm just going to make it up by somebody's gran said so. I remember my grandmother saying to me, I don't care what they tell you in school. But I'm going to keep telling you I'm correct. I'm going to pity you. And if you try and defend yourself from this aggressive attack, despite the fact that you're an Egyptologist, directed excavations in Giza, and led the search for the tomb of Cleopatra and Mark Antony, then they're just going to say that you're self-loathing, insecure, and they feel sorry for you. You know, the passive-aggressive shaming tactics of somebody who doesn't have a point or an argument or evidence. The tactics of a coward. Instead, she finds it funny that she's destroying a country's heritage. Says that you shouldn't file a lawsuit. That's an extreme reaction. Why would you sue us for making up a fantasy show about your country and then calling it a documentary? Because it seems really weird to me that you think the people who are defending themselves against you are the insecure ones in some way. You can't attack people and then be surprised when they stand up for themselves. Oh, I didn't think you'd do it. I mean, the British didn't whenever we destroyed their history. Why are you doing it when it's yours? I mean, I don't know. Why is it that the backlash for this one is so much stronger than before? Could it be that the more people you target individually, the people that you did it into in the past, they don't forget. Instead, it builds up because more and more people get fed up when you do it to them. And so when you go to the next guy, people start going, hey, you can't do that to them. You've already done it to us and we're not standing for it anymore. Actually, our history matters. Our culture matters. And you can't come over here and colonize it with your weird ideas. Maybe that's why this show has been so absolutely annihilated. Because you're kind of hitting a sort of critical mass, as people have had enough of it. We've seen this time and time again, and you should stop. But I don't just want you to stop. I want you to apologize. I think Netflix should come out and apologize to the Egyptian people for utterly disrespecting them as a people and pretending that they didn't even take part in their own history. It's a comment so laughable, I can't even believe that this show was made to begin with. I can't believe it went past the higher ups and I can't believe when it came out, Netflix wasn't so ashamed of it that they locked it in the bowels of their company never to see the light of day. But it is funny when Netflix has such a horrible history with this thing that it's already become a meme. And that is why I'm only looking forward to one more show on Netflix. Netflix Polar Bears coming to a screen near you soon. And I think this can only end the way it started, with a question for you to decide. When something keeps happening time and time again and it never changes, even when it keeps getting corrected, even when the backlash is so severe, you lose piles and piles of money. You have to ask yourself the question, is it ignorance or malevolence? You'll have to let me know down in the comments below because I've given you my thoughts and so now, what are yours? And meanwhile, if you like the video, press like. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.